Our uh, final presentation, and again, you see how much uh, big data plays a role in so many opportunities in the industry we're looking at. Uh, Long Ellis, uh, the general manager and uh, vice president of, for direct media at a relatively new company called Flurry. A uh, New York company is going to uh, share with us some ideas about what they're doing uh, for TV disruption and is mobile or wireless, or whatever we want to call it, uh, the future as we look at the uh, iPad applications. Great, thank you. Um, Tablet applications, I should yeah, yeah. say. I, I've got a PowerPoint presentation here, so I'm going to move aside. But So I'm Long Ellis. I work at Flurry, which is based in San Francisco. And a lot of people haven't heard of us, but we're the largest data and analytics company in the mobile app space. Um, by far. We have about 70% market share in the top 1,000 apps, and the closest competitor is at about 17%, and the rest are in the single digit. Um, what we did initially, we were founded in 05, is really start a free analytics service. And what you can do is basically we, we download our SDK, which is a software development kit, into an app, and then we get all the information about that app in terms of what the user is doing, <laughs> how much time they spend, where they go, and more importantly, a lot of information on who these people are, and I'll get into that later. Um, but it's a fascinating space, and you talk about big data, we are the giant in this space that no one's heard of, but I think you're going to hear a lot more about us. Um, so let me start the presentation here, uh, just to give you some more stats, uh, not a lot, but I'll, I'll just leave it at this. We are measuring over a billion devices uh, worldwide, and we process over 1.3 trillion pieces of information in terms of the actions that happen within apps, and that's more than Twitter. So we have two huge data farms. Um, half the battle with big data is organizing the data, but we've done a pretty good job so far. Um, this is interesting because you, know, you ask yourself, why is big data important uh, with television? Well, if you look at the consumer and you see what's happening across the time they spend in web browsing, mobile applications, and television. Uh, web browsing is pretty flat over the last three years, the light blue. Um, television is healthy, and you know, there are a lot of people watching television, but it is relatively flat, and the huge growth is happening in mobile. And so this is a very, very disruptive technology or platform that's affecting everybody's business and when I say disruptive, I mean it's, a, it's an opportunity actually to seize the moment and um, continue to build out your business using this new platform. Um, so a lot of strategies in terms of marketing strategies, sales strategies are changing. So looking at this in terms of how it compares to television again and the internet, what's interesting with mobile app usage is it's the green line there, pretty flat during the day outperforming television and the internet during the day. And you'll see the light blue, which is internet, it starts tailing off at about seven o'clock. And what happens with TV and mobile app usage is they both peak during prime time. So clearly a ton of people are watching uh, or using apps during the course of the day and prime time is the prime place where they're using it along with their television viewing in a lot of cases. Um, so again, it's, it's disruptive, but it's an opportunity for a lot of different companies. The good news here is that a lot of people are using their iPads as mobile te uh, televisions. And the viewing, the video viewing that's going on in, in iPads is tremendous. In the last year, it's increased about 200%. And I think it's going to continue to increase. I just heard on the radio this morning that 34% of the people in the United States now own a tablet. Um, and I believe smartphones are in the high 50s. So the tablet has caught the smartphone in a hurry here in the United States, and a lot of the consumption is video consumption. Another uh, comparison here to show you what tablets are doing is smartphones, because they are portable and they are smaller, are being used during the course of the day more so than, than tablets. But it reverses, and during prime time, people sit down on the couch when they're not as portable, they're not moving as much, and they use tablets. And, and again, this is something that's disruptive in terms of television watching, and a lot of people have their eyes on this. What we can do is really um, take the huge data that we have, and I've always been going after addressable advertising my whole life. I worked for a bunch of companies that were trying to deliver that to the marketplace. What Flurry can do now that people are watching televisions on their iPads 
is they can access our data and we can do this very, very accurately by age, gender, device, geo, location, um, language, and most importantly, I think, by persona, by audience segment. So what we do is we're in about 13 apps on average per device. We can look at your behavior and determine who you are. We also have a, um, a sample base of 35 million registered users where we know their age and gender and other research companies that are measuring all the other mediums are in the 20s of thousands. We have 35 million. So, and we have over a billion devices that we're measuring. So the accuracy is tremendous, and now you've got a portable TV where you can go after the devices of new moms, the business traveler, any kind of audience segment that you'd like to reach, and this is going to be fantastic for the whole ecosystem, um, certainly for advertisers and for publishers who can charge a higher CPM because of the targeting and, and the less waste. So um, what I think really is the tablet is now becoming almost the most effective platform that's ever been created. I mean, if you think about it, it's sight, sound, and motion, um, high viewer engagement, it's a foot from your face, there are very few distractions. You really use the tablet in almost a VOD fashion. It's not like a living room where you're watching television and then you have lots of other things that you can do to distract you. When you're watching a tablet, it's in your bedroom, it's in your den, it's on the road, but you have decided to watch. And I think that, coupled with the kind of audience targeting that Flurry can provide means probably less of an ad load, a better user experience for the end user, um, but much more impactful advertising. And I think the brand lift and all the different branding metrics are going to be a lot more powerful. So enough on that. One more little study that we did um, regarding the Super Bowl, and everyone has kicked the Super Bowl around for probably too long, but I thought this would be interesting in showing the disruption in terms of app usage during uh, the Super Bowl. So, a few stats, 108 million TV viewers per Nielsen. We measured 100 million smartphones and tablets being used during the Super Bowl. Um, consumers launched 600 million app sessions, 42,000 uh, app launches per second, and this all excludes Facebook and Twitter. So this is mostly non-social media apps because you know with social apps and Twitter and Facebook, they're being used exponentially more during something like the Super Bowl. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people are using other than those apps and they're not enhancing the TV experience or the TV advertising experience. They're actually distracting themselves from it. So here's a second by second measurement um, throughout the Super Bowl. No surprise, people are paying a lot of attention early on in the game. The app usage continues to scale. Everyone dropped their smartphones during the Beyonce halftime because it was so uh, compelling. And then they uh, grabbed it again and we went into a power outage where the app usage went through the roof again because people weren't that interested. And then thankfully the game became very close and came down to the point where almost where it started where people were paying a lot of attention. The reason I bring this up is we took a look at the Sunday previous to the Super Bowl and the app usage across all those same apps. And during the Super Bowl, the app usage only went down in aggregate 5%. And I think that is really interesting when you think about app usage and television viewership and the fact that you would think during something like the Super Bowl, you'd have a major correction. But the fact of the matter is, people are using their apps all the time. And it's a challenge for, for everybody. But um, where there is a challenge, there's an opportunity. And I think this is a little bit outdated because I think the 23% is even higher. The time spent by the consumer in apps now is probably into the 30s. And only 1% of the advertising dollars are being spent right now. So it's almost like the internet was in the late 90s. Um, as soon as there's better measurement, as soon as the advertisers are beginning to understand that this is a phenomenon that isn't going away and it's going to continue to scale, I think the, uh, it's a win-win for everybody. The, the cable companies, the cable networks are going to be able to monetize this. Um, the advertisers are going to chase the audiences and the end user with addressable advertising to the tablet are going to have a better experience and a more fulfilling one because they'll be seeing ads that are more relevant. So. That's it in terms of the presentation. Long, thank you very much. The, yeah. uh, 
A lot of questions about this. Again, the question I've asked everyone up here is, as you gather this data, it's certainly wonderful for advertisers to know exactly where their audiences are and get response from them. What's, what's your view on the privacy and personalization issues that you're going to confront as you take yeah. this around? Um, we are incredibly cautious when it comes to privacy because we have to be given the data that we have. And, and so we're taking baby steps. We don't advertise uh, or actually measure kids' apps. We're staying away from that. We could actually do a much more granular job of targeting in terms of geolocation. We don't do that. Which is, tr which is tremendously important to some people. Yeah, yeah. It, it will become important. But what we realize is that this is a transition. And I mean, personally, I bring it on. I mean, I think if, if I get more relevant ads, I'm more interested. It's a better experience. Who, um, who in the cable infrastructure ecosystem are you looking at? Programmers, the network operator, the uh, carriers, where? Everybody. I mean, everyone, <laughs> the cliche is if you don't have a uh, mobile strategy, you don't have a strategy. I mean, everyone is going mobile. The cable companies obviously can aggregate a lot of inventory across their TV Everywhere apps. Flurry can target that audience. The station groups can aggregate across all their stations. The movie studios can aggregate because they're going into this sort of app strategy of dis distributing their, their you know, the, the, the content they can't get on the air now. Right. They're sitting on a ton of content that's collecting dust. Um, and they're very forward thinking. And, and then the TV networks, I mean, they've got to chase that audience that's going there. And they can, they just have to prepare for it. But I, I think actually, again, the tablet is a unique phenomenon um, that's going to be more powerful than actually TV. As we've talked about it, there's so many changes going on and others doing this similar things, competing with you, finding new approaches. It's an exciting time. It is. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for having me. And I'll